Today we're helping uh, Chewy with his separation anxiety and he's a little chorky. So what we're going to be doing is um, slowly progressing to have the guardian be able to leave the house with him staying nice and calm. Now things that I want the guardian to be looking for, he's just kind of smelling my leg, is notice where his tail is right now. So see that his tail is nice and low. It's actually, if his tail was longer, it would be hanging you know, down by his legs and it's nice and low. It's not even even with his spine at this point, which is an indicator that he's nice and calm. So what we wanna be doing is keeping that as a benchmark for whether we're going at the right pace or going too fast. We want his tail to be where it is now or at the very least um, level with his spine. Oh, he's playing with a toy he's never played with before. <laughs> so isn't that exciting? Um, and so notice again how he's just nice and calm. So I'm gonna ask the um, guardian to go ahead and get off the couch and go ahead and put her coat on. So again, notice his behavior and his tail is staying nice and low. He's not too worked up about this. This is what we call a warm run through where we have already gone through this a couple of times already. So he is comfortable with what we're doing. And usually I wouldn't go in as fast paced as we are for the video, but I want this to be more instructional and informative. And we had done that about five times, just putting the coat on, having her come sit back down on the couch and watching his behavior. Earlier while practicing, he was at the point where he was laying on the couch and as we got farther along and just putting the coat on and off and having the guardian sit back down, he wasn't even picking his head up. So he's staying really nice and calm and wasn't really alerted by the fact that she was doing this. Um, so go ahead and put your coat on and get put your bag up. And what we're doing here is we're taking all the steps that we would do as we're about to leave and just making them really common so he feels nice and comfortable. With him sitting, this is a good signal that he's nice and calm. Um, and you wanna be doing each of these steps about five times before you move on to the next progression. Now we've already worked on this off camera, just to remind you. So we're just going through this a little faster pace. A dog that's sitting or laying down is much more relaxed than a dog that's standing. But again, if the dog is standing and the tail is at least level with his back or lower, that's fine and you can keep progressing. And as another note, while we're um, kind of taking a quick break in between um, intervals, we want to talk about how to leave the dog and how to come home to the dog. So one thing you want to make sure to do is not make a big deal out of it. So you want to make sure that he's nice and calm and he is, and you're not getting him worked up with like, oh, bye, buddy, oh, bye, let's, I'm gonna go, and giving him treats or doing anything to get him really worked up. Same thing when you come home. If he doesn't look very calm with his tail about level, you don't wanna pet him or engage with him. Dogs think in very causative in effect ways, so if he's acting that worked up, he thinks that that kind of energy is what produces you to come back home. And to help him stop the separation anxiety, we want him to assume that calm behavior is the key to getting his guardians to come back home. So go ahead and put your coat on and pick up your bag. And this time, walk to the door and open it a little bit and then um, go ahead and take your coat off, put the bag down and sit back down. Again, nice and calm. He's very relaxed. And this is the goal. We want the goal to be is that throughout the entire process, he never gets anxious and never gets worked, worked up by this process. We want him to look bored. And if he's bored, it means he's so calm that he won't be going through that separation anxiety. The other thing we talked about off camera that I want to remind you of is that he, to help make progress go even faster, we're going to have him staying with his grandma and his aunt and playing with his dog siblings because the family adopted a couple of the puppies from the same litter. So he'll be going over there so he doesn't experience any separation anxiety while the guardian is working on these stages. So it is always much faster to be able to break separation anxiety if every time you leave it's only for training purposes like this in the times that you actually have to be gone for long periods of time, you can find a place for him to go while he's um, while you're away at work or other things like that. So this will make progress go much faster. And like anything else, the more time and practice that you put into this, so the more times you get to practice this intentionally at home at night, 
the faster he will learn and be able to progress to having longer and longer time periods where um, you can be leaving him. Okay, go ahead and this time step outside the door. And notice that the guardian's always doing the same things because this is her normal routine. She puts her coat on and then gets her bag. So she's going through her normal routine each and every time. So she's not leaving her coat um, down just because she's stepping outside for a second. Now, again, he is standing right at the door, but his tail is nice and low. So he's paying attention to what she's doing, but he's not getting overly anxious. Or actually, he's not anxious at all. Good. Excellent. Again, tail nice and low, body posture is nice and relaxed. Quick note on certain stress behaviors to um, make note of. One of them is yawning. Yawning is a stress signal. Panting, um, lifting one paw up, stretching a lot, and then licking lips. So those are all signs that he's starting to get stressed. He's not displaying any of those right now, but I just want to mention them um, on camera so you have this to refer back to later. And another sign that I really like that he's very comfortable with this um, training session is that he's going back to chewing on his toys and playing and he's not glued right to his guardian. He's actually he's able to play and do his own thing without um, you know, showing too much insecurity and anxiety behaviors. That would what I would be concerned about is if he jumped up on the couch and was glued right to her, sat on her lap, um, and was panting or acting stressed. That would be a sign that we're going too fast. But since he can be playing with his toys and nice and calm on the floor, those are all great signs. All right, let's um, do the last part where you're gonna put your coat on, grab your bag, and then go um, out the doors and go a little bit farther away. Um, and we're gonna be increasing the duration. Durations that I like to work up to are things like this. So we're starting off with um, only a couple seconds to a couple minutes um, going outside. Once we get up to about five minutes being away, you can usually start doing doubling. So five to 10 minutes, 10 minutes to about 20. 20, I would usually go to about 30. 30 to about 45 to an hour. And then once you get up to an hour, I would go in about half hour in increments. So an hour to an hour and a half an hour and a half to two hours, two and a half hours to three. Once you get up to three, you can usually then go up to four and so on and so forth. So those are the increments that I would um, typically expect to see um, for successfully going through this. Last thing I wanna mention before we end this um, video is that you wanna be doing each duration for about five times, especially when you get into longer durations and you're working up to that. And also pepper in shorter durations. So once you get up to say 20 minutes, you might wanna start coming back inside, walking out to your car and coming back in. So he's still getting time periods where you leave for only about a minute. That will help him make progress even faster because it means that every time you leave, it doesn't get harder, always. Sometimes it's really easy and he can feel nice and relaxed. All right, so this is how we're gonna help Chewy how to work on a separation anxiety.